Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, October 31st. Andre Karpathy, Tesla's former head of artificial intelligence, said that he could return to Tesla, especially to work on the Optimus robot and artificial general intelligence. Karpathy joined Tesla more than five years ago as a neural net and computer vision expert, then became the head of AI development. In March, Karpathy announced that he was going on sabbatical for four months. At the time we reported, it was actually worrisome, since Tesla executives taking a break has most often resulted in them not coming back. Sure enough, Karpathy announced in July that he was not returning to Tesla. However, on a recent podcast, the engineer said, quote, I would actually be interested in revisiting Tesla, maybe coming back at some point, maybe to work on Optimus or AGI at Tesla. I think Tesla is going to do incredible things. It's a massive, large-scale robotics company with in-house talent doing incredible things. Now, Tesla CEO Elon Musk responded on Twitter by saying that Carpathy would, quote, always be welcome at Tesla. Tesla has showcased the strength of its actuator technology for the Tesla bot by having a single leg actuator of the robot lift an entire piano. At Tesla's AI Day last month, the company unveiled the latest Tesla Optimus prototype, equipped with Tesla-designed actuators for the first time rather than off-the-shelf products. Unfortunately, the prototype was so recent that Tesla wasn't ready to make it walk just yet. Tesla has now highlighted a video of one leg actuator performing a heavy feat. Get it? The video shows one leg actuator being used to lift and lower a half-ton piano while a pianist was playing and practicing his thriller dance moves at the same time. Tesla doesn't often produce marketing videos such as this one, but we may be getting one with the Tesla bot walking around very soon. Just months after announcing plans to terminate the joint venture between Jeep and the GAC Auto Group in China, the Stellantis joint venture has officially filed for bankruptcy. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean Stellantis has filed for bankruptcy, nor Jeep, but the joint venture that was made in China between the two has. In 2010, the precursor to Stellantis signed a joint venture with Chinese manufacturer GAC Auto Group to produce its vehicles for their local markets overseas, including the Jeep brand. It's actually common in China to have some other company produce the vehicles and then have the more known car company, such as Jeep, put their stamp on it, even if the car internally is completely different from Europe and North American models. The joint venture covered today has been struggling for some years. While the lack of sales has been one glaring issue, the Stellantis CEO publicly announced the breakup, saying it was rooted in broken trust with the GAC Group, simultaneously blaming Chinese policy that favors local automotive brands. GAC Group quickly fired back, calling the CEO's comments unbelievable and then blamed the failure on Stellantis's lack of respect for Chinese customers. According to the statement issued by Stellantis today, the Jeep joint venture has officially filed for bankruptcy, complete with the approval from both partners. On account of dwindling sales, the bankruptcy may not have an impact on either operations. As a matter of fact, a report from Automotive News Europe said that last May, the joint venture sold exactly two vehicles. Global battery giant CATL and Vietnamese EV automaker VinFast have announced the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding to expand upon the current battery supply agreement. With this new strategic cooperation, the companies will explore skateboard platforms for EVs and also other areas surrounding EV and battery technology. According to a press release by CATL, a part of the signing of the MOU with VinFast includes the intention to, quote, explore various forms of cooperation on CII skateboard chassis on top of the current cooperation on CTP or cell-to-pack battery supply between the two companies. Now, if you're curious, the CIIC skateboard is not a new industry term, but it's actually a marketing term from the CATL company in which it stands for CATL Integrated Intelligent Chassis. So there's an acronym inside the acronym. VinFast is throwing a ton of money at their EV venture most notably in marketing, but we shall see if they stick to their battery rental plan, which was announced to some raised eyebrows. In the description, you can find a link to a previous quick charge where we reported on the baffling details of this battery rental purchase and lease plan. Again, link in the description with a time code. 
Continuing with battery production, Panasonic has announced that they aim to produce 30 gigawatt hours of battery cells during the first phase of its new Kansas factory expected to supply Tesla's vehicle production. Panasonic is planning to break ground in DeSoto, Kansas as soon as next month. It was believed that Panasonic might produce Tesla's new 4680 cell format, but the company actually confirmed, at least for the first phase, that they will produce the 2170 battery cells. Panasonic said that they're aiming for a production of 30 gigawatt hours with a target of March 2025 to begin mass production. The new factory is going to be located around 700 miles from Gigafactory, Texas, where the automaker's new U.S. production capacity is expected to come for the next few years. Okay, it is opinion time. I find it rather amusing, number one, that you're hearing an opinion from a chicken, and also, I find it rather amusing that the Stellantis CEO was so gruff with the Chinese joint venture. For a CEO to speak so harshly and so publicly about the company could be a sign of something below the surface. I know that entering the Chinese market in general terms comes with new rules, both literal and figurative. Many Western companies leave the market with harsh feelings and sometimes with some verbal fireworks as they go. GAC Auto Group is not a small potatoes partner, by the way. They have deals to produce cars for other Stellantis names like Fiat and Dodge, but they also produce cars for Mitsubishi, Toyota, and also Honda motorcycles. As far as I can tell, it's become a normal thing for Chinese companies or government representatives to fire back, often stating that their feelings have been hurt. Even after all this time, I imagine they don't realize that in Western cultures, the phrase is often taken as a sign of weakness or petulance. At any rate, I anticipate seeing more off-brand Jeep vehicles in China, now that the joint venture has severed any semblance of standards. We might even see some of them with the Jeep brand labels slapped on them. Who knows? In today's community comment found on YouTube, Terry Sullivan says, good, but always too short. Thank you, Terry. I've got to run tonight to go trick-or-treating with my sweet pea, so I must be going. Thank you for your comment, no matter how small. And thank you for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G. And I hope you have a spooky day.